Hi, I'm Harrington Benton. This is Total Team Control. Let's take a look at our linebacker for the New Orleans Saints, Jonathan Vilma. He's going to demonstrate the swerving technique for us. He's going to swerve to the right, back to the left, back to the right, and take it to the end zone. Unsuccessful. Let's give him another try. And he takes the football about 80 yards downfield. Let's give him one more try and let's see if we can get him to take that all the way to the end zone. As he swerves back and forth. And he heads out of bounds. Let's give him another try. This is a very difficult maneuver in electric football. Only here at Total Team Control. Let's give him a try now. As he swerves back and forth and eventually goes out of bounds. We want Jonathan Vilman to take that football 100 yards. We want Jonathan Vilman to take it all the way to the end zone, swerving to the left, back to the right, back to the left and to the right, and into the end zone. It's a very difficult maneuver, and after we've successfully executed that maneuver, we'll lock in a dial number for Jonathan Vilma, and we'll make that a permanent part of his repertoire. Let's see Jonathan Vilma take the football to the end zone. As he swerves nicely back and forth, but again, out of bounds. He's given us some s swerving, not as much as we would like. But let's see if we can get him to the end zone. Heavy swerving. And Jonathan Vilma takes the football to the end zone. That is a very difficult maneuver in electric football. Let's take a look at Jonathan Vilma's base. As we'll give him a dial number setting at this time. And lock that dial number in. And we should be able to execute that swerving technique every time for Jonathan Vilma. Here we're taking a look at Vilma's base. As you can see, his dial number which allowed Jonathan to execute is set at five. His dial number is set at five. And remember, when setting a dial number, you're counting The center notch on his TTC wheel at zero, the first lobe would be one, the next notch would be two, the next lobe would be three, the next notch would be four. So let's take let's 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 say that that's going to be four. I think that's going to be four. Yes, his dial number is actually set at four, 
as it is in that second notch, which would make his dial number a four. Let's take a look at Jonathan Vilma's prongs, his rear prongs. We've taken his right rear prong and we've depressed it forward. We've taken his left rear prong and depressed it back. With good pressure and holding those prongs in place so that they pick up these positions and hold themselves in those positions. And again, his TTC dial number is four. What's happening with Jonathan Vilma on the football field is with a player, sometimes depending on the position of the player and the pose of the player, determines the weight distribution of the players on his base. Normal weight distribution will put the majority of the weight on the rear prongs and that player and that base will be driven mainly by the rear prongs under normal speed and under slow speeds. The rear prongs would drive the direction of the player. Under heavy vibration, as the speed increases, a player tends to do this. Get up onto his front prongs. This is what happens as the vibration increases on the field. The player gets up on his front prongs as those front prongs begin to dig in and bite into the surface of the field. What happens is, is as the player lifts up onto his front prongs under heavy vibration, the front prongs become the guidance for that particular player. Let's reset his dial number to a four there. So under slow and normal speeds, the rear prongs will drive the direction of the player. And under high speeds and heavy vibration, the player rears up onto his front prongs and the front prongs begin to guide the player. This is what makes the swerving technique possible. As the player moves along the field, to lower vibration, we have him set by way of his rear prongs to move to the right. But as he reaches heavy vibration, the player will rear up onto his front prongs and the guidance of the player will be taken over by the front prongs, which we have set to go to the left, enabling Jonathan to come to the left. Again, as he reaches low vibration, the rear prongs 
again, will take over the guidance of the player and drive him back to the right until he reaches another area of heavy vibration he'll rear up on his front prongs and head back to the left this is what makes the swerving technique possible the X factors are where are the vibration zones on the football field the danger is, is that if a player is set on his rear prong for his rear prongs to take him to the right and he doesn't reach a heavy enough vibration area to put him up onto his front prongs, the player will go out of bounds or into a circle. Or if he remains in a heavy vibration area, He'll stay on his front prongs and he'll go out of bounds or into a circle into the direction of the front prongs or his TTC dial prongs. Most fields have heavy and weak vibration zones throughout the field. This is what makes the swerving technique possible. You just saw it, Jonathan Vilma swerving back and forth into the end zone on total team control. I'm Harrington Benton. See you next time.